I don't think we can live in a society that tolerates this level of disrespect, whether it's in our parliaments, in our corporate environments, whether it's in our media, and certainly the ultimate manifestation of that disrespect is of course violence and sometimes death. Thanks for joining us today. What, why, why are we seeing more and more people impacted by domestic and family violence? Well, I think more people are aware of the issue and I think more people want to do something about it. I'm not sure if the numbers of people affected have necessarily changed, although we do know, unfortunately and tragically, that the numbers in relation to women who are dying violently, they're not moving much at all. We're seeing at least every week a woman murdered. And to change those statistics is, you know, requires community action. And I think people are ready to take action. There's definitely increased awareness, definitely increased reporting. And those things are good things, but what we really need to do is to stop the violence happening in the first place. So, how do we do that? Well, primary prevention is the core business of our watch. It's about addressing the attitudes and the behaviours that give rise to that violence. But it's a long-term process and it's very multifaceted. So we need to uh, embed gender equality and respect throughout society. And that's not going to happen overnight. But we can start with the places where we live, we work, we love, we play, we learn. If there's one thing, one thing that we could do, and you've You've talked about a range of, a yes. package of initiatives, which I know are clearly imperative, but if there's one thing, oh. what, what would that be? It's so complex that it, I'd like to say do something. And I think that means as parents, as employers, employees, so as workers, friends, politicians and leaders, everyone has to take an interest in this issue because we can only tackle this as a community. So be aware and please be good bystanders. So don't let sexist jokes or outrageous attitudes or gender, rigid gender stereotypes take hold and get perpetuated. So call them out. The government and the opposition both announce meaningful uh, financial packages and quite significant expansion in services. Is that starting to provide some encouragement to our watch and to 1800 and other organisations? Look, there are reasons for optimism. And I think the fact that political leaders now accept that inextricable link between inequality and gender inequality and violence against women and children, that's really important. But the, the next step is, you know, resourcing these issues, having policies and practices that try and stamp out these issues. But also I'd like to see our politicians model respectful, ethical, healthy relationships and behaviour themselves. And that doesn't always happen. So there's reason to be optimistic, but by the same token, you know, packages of hundreds of millions of dollars compared to a scourge that actually costs us $21 billion per annum, we've got a lot of work to do. Thank you for everything you're doing on this incredibly important topic. Your book on violence, uh, fabulous read, and so many important messages in that. Your chair of Our Watch, um, thanks for showing great leadership and thanks for being with us today.